the Vegas Grand Prix. From beautiful moments like this. 16, 15 and 16. Charles Leclerc's going for it to the inside. Has he got the car slowed down? To moments like this. From Mexico, it's Sergio Chefko Vegas always delivers whether good or bad and with 17 turns, two DRS sections and top speeds potentially reaching up to 215 miles per hour, this is everything that you need to know for the Vegas Grand Prix 2024. So we'll start off with the F1 news and rumours that you need to know going into Vegas and to put it simply, we're getting to that point of the season where we've had silly season with all the driver changes, most of them. And there's not much news to be going about. The only big news that has been confirmed is that Duracell are confirmed to continue sponsoring Williams into 2025. So we'll be seeing a lot of that battery on the livery. I mean, I'm quite a fan of it for advertising. And then rumor wise, it's a little bit weird because there's a lot of rumors swirling around, especially in Color Pinto's home country, Argentina. A lot of articles saying that potentially he could be going to Red Bull at least joining the Red Bull family. This is speculation that I think a lot of people think could happen, especially a move to VCarb. A move to Red Bull would be quite ambitious from them. But hey, don't push it out just yet. Perez hasn't really spoken about these rumours just so far. I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be the most crazy thing to think of Colapinto in a VCarb, but I'd highly doubt I'd see him in a Red Bull. Realistically, if anything like this does happen, bear in mind, I do want to remind everyone it's just a rumour. There's no actual big news on it. Would be one of Lawson or Sonoda going up to that Red Bull spot, Perez getting the drop, and then bringing Colapinto into VCarb to see what he can do from there. But that about wraps up the news and rumours. It really is nice and simple going into Vegas. So with that, we need to talk about the talking points. And the big one for me is the Verstappen Championship. So as we know, the championship with Norris and Verstappen's kind of over. Verstappen's got a 62-point gap for Norris to win. Verstappen needs to DNF and basically two of the last three races. Which, hey, uh, knock on wood, because, you know, I'll probably give it a commentator's curse now. I just don't see any world that Verstappen gets two DNFs or that Norris gets all of the big points available for him getting all three wins from Vegas, Qatar and Abu Dhabi. But there are a few ways that Verstappen does win the championship here. So if Verstappen wins the race, he's won the championship. If he finishes ahead of Norris, he's won the championship. Or if Norris finishes ninth or below without fastest lap, Verstappen would win the championship. Now, let's say Verstappen doesn't win the race because I don't think this is a Red Bull track. And let's say he comes second place. Well, if Norris won, he'd still be in the championship. But if he comes third or below, basically anywhere behind Verstappen in that second place, he loses the championship. And then in third place, if Verstappen comes third, Norris has to win the race again to stay in the championship. However, even with Verstappen in third place, Norris would have to come second with fastest lap to keep the championship alive. So uh, as you can tell from what I'm thinking and what everyone thinks, that's championship over. I don't actually think... It will be decided this weekend because I do think Norris has a good chance of being in the top three. And I do think it's more of a Ferrari McLaren fight like we saw in Mexico that's going to happen this weekend. So technically the championship battle will still be going into Qatar. But I think definitely Qatar's the weekend where we see Verstappen crown as a four-time world champion, which is a massive achievement. For then we also need to have a look at the Ferraris because Ferrari have been doing brilliantly bar Brazil. But I mean, we can't really take into consideration a lot of things that happened in Brazil because it was just so chaotic. But looking at Mexico, looking at Cota, there's elements of those races at Vegas. And last season in 2023, it was one of Ferrari's most competitive weekends where it looked like Leclerc could go toe to toe with Verstappen in a Red Bull, which bar Singapore was unheard of that weekend. So do I expect Ferrari to be fast? 100%. In my opinion, they're going to be the top car coming into this weekend with McLaren just behind them. So if Red Bull want to get into it, they've got to do a lot of work. But it's definitely going to be a weekend to keep an eye on the Ferrari boys. I really do think Leclerc could come out with a win here. And then the final thing you should be looking out for in the Vegas Grand Prix is the battle for sixth place. So right now, Alpine, VCarb and Haas are all separated by five points. VCarb on 44, Haas on 46 and Alpine on 49. Now, what makes it so interesting is, of course, Alpine 
shouldn't really be exactly where they are. They had a double podium and basically leapfrogged from ninth place up into sixth. So it's going to be so interesting to see if VCarb and Haas can catch them because we've only three races to go, especially VCarb on five points. That's a big ask from a team like that. They have to make sure they get into the top 10 multiple races at the end of the season. Hopefully for them, Aston Martin can't pick up the pace because if they can't, I think it's doable. Same with Haas. I think Haas will re-overtake Alpine this weekend because it's only a three-point deficit and a normal race weekend, I could see either Hulkenberg or Magnussen finishing in the top eight. But it's very much going to be Alpine just dying to get at least one of their drivers into the points each race. I don't know, doing some of the craziest potential strategies just to get Gasly into 10th or, you know, Ocon to slow down the rest of the field so Gasly can do it. Sort of what Haas did in Jeddah with Hulkenberg and Magnussen. We'll see. But all I know is that fight is getting more juicy than the Drivers' World Championship. It generally could finish up with all of them changing position. That's a massive difference in winnings that each team would get. And especially for smaller teams like Haas and Alpine, this is money that they really need when developing their car. And now it is prediction time of the video. And now before everyone starts throwing tomatoes at me, going boo boo in the comment section, I've just been very extremely busy. I know I need to go and do the Toto Wolf two and a half thousand times saying his name's video. And I will get around to it. It's just most likely if I get this one wrong as well. And if I get the last three, they will be in the Christmas break. Because there's a lot going on with F1 right now. There's a lot of videos to be made. And especially with work as well. It's a, it's a lot. So I'm probably going to have to push all of those forfeits back to the winter break. And also, it kind of works out. Because there's not going to be as many videos to make. So they're going to be quite fun to make then. Because I'm going to be itching to make some videos. But with that out of the way, my prediction this weekend is, drum roll please, Zhou Guan Yu will not finish P20. Now, there's a reason I didn't say last place and said P20, and that's because if he comes 19th and someone's DNF, then I don't have to do the forfeit. However, if Zhou does come P20, then I will make a five minute video with a poem confessing my love for Zhou Guan Yu and everything just amazing about that man. So, have I probably ever written a poem in my life? Probably when I was back in school for English GCSE, maybe. But that's about it. I'm not the best poet. So, let's see what happens. For me, hopefully I don't have to deal with this because it'd probably take me about half an hour just to make that. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> but for the actual predictions for the race, my top three are as followed. Leclerc. Norris Piastri. I do think it's a Ferrari weekend, but I think Carlos Sainz isn't really going to be there. Last season, it was an amazing for him. And I mean, the McLarens last season as well. It wasn't a great track for them, but I think they'll be okay. Then for my overperformer, I have gone with Alex Albon. Now, I've been waiting basically since Colapinto's joined F1 for Albon to have a good race. And I really do think he's got a point to prove to Williams to show, hey, look at me. I'm still the top dog here, especially with signs coming in. Even if it hasn't been his fault, well, sort of not his fault. I mean, technically, it still was crashing out and qualifying in Brazil. Then in Mexico, he had the racing incident with Sonoda. There's a lot of things that have happened to Albon recently. So he needs a good race. And I do think he's going to get one. I think he could top 10 maybe at a push, but definitely a top 12 finish. He's going to regain his confidence and have a good final triple header for this season. Now, underperformer, sadly, I do think it's going to be Esteban Ocon. Like I mentioned, I do think Alpine are going to be going absolutely crazy on strategies, making sure no one else gets fastest laps and stuff. They've done it for Williams before as well, purely because they know they need to keep Haas and VCarb at bay, and it's going to be a very hard task for them to do that. And I don't think it's going to work out for them, especially with their pace naturally. I think Ocon's going to struggle the most compared to him and Gasly. And then for last place, I have gone with Valtteri Bottas. Now, purely because I just have this weird feeling that I don't think Joe's going to finish last this weekend. Maybe because how much time can you lose if you're going in a straight for half of the race, which is what Vegas basically is. But also, that means hopefully he'll be closer to Bottas. Maybe Bottas will have a few issues and he'll finish last. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope you all now know what you should be looking out for in the Vegas Grand Prix. 
Keep an eye on those predictions. I'd like to hear your predictions down below. Top three, who's going to finish last? Who do you think is going to do well? All of the above. And anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for some more F1 content, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.